Welcome back hunters to another tutorial with Ska Sensei here. Today the sword and shield is what we're going to be looking at and it's quite honestly one of the most underrated weapons. But in reality this weapon actually packs a punch. Now the sword and shield is quite a unique weapon as there aren't too many specific combos. But rather it allows you to combine a number of different moves to fit your playstyle. Making it one of the most versatile classes out there. So for this video, I'll really be going over all of the moves and I'll talk about the different playstyles for each one and then you guys can kind of choose and decide what fits you best. Now, what makes Sword and Shield unique and versatile is primarily its super fast sheathing capabilities. It's easily the fastest weapon that you can put away and then you can heal, set traps, clutch claw, whatever you need to do and then you can get right back into the action. Another great perk that I'll talk about later on is that you can also do all of these without putting your weapon away. So depending on the situation, you've got multiple options. Another great perk is the high frequency of attacks. You can constantly output damage as most attacks have very small animation locks, making it quite easy for you to quickly roll and dodge monsters. Finally, adding to the high frequency of hits, this works really well with status or element weapons. It also has a decent KO function, making it great for all players with different play styles. So already you can see there's a whole bunch of different aspects to this weapon, so let's jump into the moveset and we'll talk and discuss about each one individually. So starting off, like most weapons, you have a light and a heavy slash as your basic attacks. However, most other weapons, the heavy hits have less attacks or they have longer animations. This does not actually apply to Sword and Shield and actually doing a triple light attack has a longer ending animation than triple heavy hits. So if you're ever in a position where you can only get a few hits in, start practicing to use those heavy hits. It's really just free damage out there my friends. If you do have some time to fit a few hits in, the basic bread and butter combo is to do two light attacks followed by three heavy hits. This is great for damage, you avoid the long animation on the third light attack and you can roll or dodge at any given point. So as you can see here, at any point during this combo you can roll or dodge, no matter of light or heavy attack. So additionally, if you'd like to add some impact damage, you can actually change the back half of this combo to apply shield bashing. Now all impact damage on the sword and shield comes from this shield particularly. So this combo won't deal as much damage, but again it's adding that impact so you can get a KO with sword and shield. Now this also isn't the biggest KO damage dealer on this class as we'll see later on, but it's definitely helpful to get those extra little bits just to reach that KO limit. So I have two more quick notes about the basic combo. The round slash is always the end of your combo and it's the highest damage dealer. However, if you know you can't finish a combo in time, the round slash can actually be activated at any point. So my recommendation here is that as you can see, Fit in as many attacks as you can and then activate the round slash to get that high damage in and then you can roll or reposition whatever you need to do. The last basic move here that I'll mention is the advancing slash. Now essentially this is a really good way to get right into the action after you dodge or roll and also you can follow this attack with any combo that you like. So it's a great way to get some quick damage and then segue into any main combos. Additionally, it's also great to get damage right from your sheath and you can do this by just holding your movement key or stick and then hitting the light slash button. Now, some say Insect Glaive is the best mounting weapon, others say Hammer is the best. In my opinion though, Sword and Shield is the best mounting weapon. Now I say this because primarily there's multiple ways to get mounting damage with this weapon, but there's also some really cool ways that you can get it as well. So taking a look here, if you use both attack buttons near any ledge, you'll initiate an advancing slash which will then lunge you right off the ledge. Following that, if you do any extra attack button, you'll do the jumping slash which gets your mount damage. Now something quick to note here as well is you can see the jumping advance slash happens immediately after you leave the ledge. Now that also has mounting damage but the monster has to be in very close proximity so the closer to the ledge you can get the monster, the better. Similar to most other weapons as well though, you can get a jumping slash by sliding down a slope. Now these first two are pretty similar to other weapons, but let's talk about something that's different. Sword and Shield can actually get some mounting damage when you're going up a ledge. That's right, up a ledge. The controls for this are essentially the same thing of doing an advancing slash into the wall. That'll carry you up and then you can do any attack to land the jumping slash. This is a huge advantage for mounting with Sword and Shield. While getting mounting damage, this move is also just useful in general to climb small ledges and damage, whereas for all other weapons you have a long climb animation or you have to sheath. The last mounting move here is off of walls which I believe is the coolest move in Sword and Shield. 
Similar again, all you need to do is an advancing slash into the wall and the animation will push you into the helm breaker attack. This move goes directly behind you but you can also direct it left and right if you need to. I've never found it to be very useful since it's kinda hard to aim but it's there if you need it as well. This move does multiple attacks throughout the monster until you reach the ground so it's great for damage in addition to mounting. So all of these moves are great ways for sword and shield to mount and the best thing I gotta say is you can actually do this all from sheathing because as I mentioned previously you can do the advanced slash from sheath and that advanced slash will get you to any of these jumps off the ledge, up the ledges or even off the walls. Before we get to the combos and big DPS attacks, the last skill I want to mention particularly for Iceborne is the Clutch Claw and specifically tenderizing with the Clutch Claw. Sword and Shield has its own special Clutch Claw attack which unlike most weapons, the special CC enhances the effect and you actually can tenderize a part in one hit. Now how you perform this is when your weapon is out, you simply roll towards the part that you wish to tenderize and hit the slinger aim button. Keep in mind that the roll does obviously move you forward so you'll have to give yourself slight gap so you don't roll past the target body part. You must hit the aimer button before the end of the roll and if it's successful you will automatically clutch claw and then you'll be able to input an attack just to begin the weekend. This move is super useful, I've used it for a lot of hunts and if you start a hunt with rock steady you know you can have the monster weakened in the first 30 seconds and that's the best thing, you can then go in for another knock because you've only done one clutch claw. So definitely a very useful skill, quick to learn, quick to execute, it's best to use when monsters are knocked or exhausted, or if you have rock steady look for those openings where they're not doing big attacks. Mastering the timing of using this special clutch cloth throughout a hunt will give you a huge boost in your DPS using sword and shield. Okay, I lied about one thing, there is one more useful skill that we have to talk about, the back step. Now this can be quickly used to create some distance from monsters so it's a good dodging mechanism. But also and more importantly it's a segue into some of your much stronger attacks in sword and shield. So backstep can be performed in multiple ways. So the first is simply after any attack you can do the backstep. This is really useful for situations where you're attacking and then you see the monster attacking you and you need to dodge immediately. This can also be useful if an opening suddenly appears for a stronger combo. You can break the combo that you're doing immediately and backstep into a stronger attack. The second comes from guard which is essentially holding a shield and then hopping back. This is honestly the most efficient if your weapon is actually sheathed away because you can go straight from a sheathed weapon into guard. And we'll discuss that in a little bit but as I mentioned, backstep segues you to your strongest attacks. So using guard gets you from sheath to your strongest combo the fastest. The last method is immediately after a roll you can hit your heavy hit which will initiate the backstep. This is best if your weapon is already out and you're a few steps away from the monster. You can roll to get in close and in position and then immediately backstep to again segue into your powerful attacks. So say for example if a teammate knocks a monster a few meters away, you can roll, backstep and then start your strongest attack instead of walking up guarding and then doing the backstep or attacking and doing the backstep. The roll is very key to cover that distance and get right into your action. So those are the three ways that you can get into backstep and as I mentioned it's a great dodging mechanism and it actually does have iframes. So the best sword and shield users, they use their backstep and perfectly time to dodge a monster and then immediately go into an attack which we'll talk about in the next section. Just at this moment though you can also cancel any following attack by simply hitting the back S button again. That performs a rising slash and stops you dead in your tracks. So from here you can heal, reposition, whatever you may need to do after a dodge. The backstep is probably one of the most crucial skills that you can have with sword and shield. If you can master this, you're well on your way to using this weapon efficiently. Moving on to attacks, from backstep your easiest strong attack is the charge slash. Perfect to use if the monster is not knocked or stunned or even if they are if you know you don't have enough time for a perfect rush, this is your go to attack. To use this, simply hold down your heavy slash button after a backstep and then release to send you into a forward lunge with a glowing weapon. You have about a full second window here in terms of charge time but this weapon doesn't have charge stages like other weapons. So at any moment within that one second if you want to attack, just release and go for it. If you successfully hit the monster, the combo actually continues into an aerial portion where it'll send you up and you can come down with one of two options. You can either apply mounting damage with your light attack button 
or apply impact damage with your heavy slash button. So a cool looking attack with options depending on your playstyle, situation or monster you are hunting making it a very versatile attack. It also is one of your higher damage dealing moves so be sure to learn to time this attack well. The other really cool thing about this move is that it actually follows the sword and shield trend of constant damage. You can initiate another back step right after landing the final hit which again loops you and you can do it again as many times as you want. One thing to keep in mind is you can actually reposition yourself with this charge attack. So you can see here I turn about 20 to 25 degree angle here. So this just helps you reposition just a bit if the monster moves a little bit or if you're out of place just a bit it can help you. You can also reposition yourself in the air when you're coming down by using the directional keys and that'll just turn your attack a little bit to the left or right. Finally we reach the perfect rush. It's your strongest moveset which again begins from the backstab but it's a single combo with three main steps. So do keep in mind that this has a much bigger animation lock than any other moves so you really should be using this combo on knocks or big openings as you can see here. This attack requires you to have accurate timing to deal the highest damage. If you time all three steps appropriately, your weapon will remain charged for all three phases and you will deal a huge amount of damage. So basically, if you're a button spammer, this isn't for you. So taking a look here, following the back step, you move into a lunge and there are three points you have to click when your weapon is drawn back. So the pattern that you're really looking for here is that the sword is drawn back first, which is when you click, then a few hits pass, then your shield is back, and then finally the sword is drawn back to end off the rush. For you audio learners, listen for the heavy sounding shingly noise for every step. Once you hear it, you have about a half second to click the light attack to keep the charge going. I will say the timing is quite difficult to master so don't feel bad if you miss one, just keep on going and practice on it. Completing the rush is the most important thing because the third attack is your strongest one. If you hit the third one you will actually do a super lunge which latches onto the monster part and it'll deal super high damage. Now with perfect rush being covered let's talk about a couple of these elements together and we'll use Nergi as an example here. Perfect rush is a must on all downs, paralysis, maybe even some exhaustions depending on your positioning. It does have the longest animation locks relative to all other sword and shield attack and because your final hit is the highest dealing damage it's not really worth it unless you know you can finish that combo. In terms of starting the perfect rush I would recommend rolling into a back step and then initiating the perfect rush. Guard also works if you're sheathed but the roll is quite effective especially to cover some distance that you may be away from the monster. So pro tip here I'll suggest, if you practice with the roll, the special clutch claw skill also becomes quite easy to master. You'll develop muscle memory to always roll and then alternate between tenderizing parts and perfect rush damage. So taking Nergi as an example here, I already know his head is tenderized so when I see him knock over I just roll and start my perfect rush right away. And again you'll notice here he actually fell over farther away from me so again moving up to him and then guarding and then starting your back step and then your perfect rush takes a lot longer than just rolling into the target and starting the back step. Now I've mentioned guard throughout this tutorial quite a bit so let's just expand on it a bit. Guarding with sword and shield honestly just isn't as good as lance or gun lance or even charge blade. The shield uses a lot of stamina and it has a much bigger knockback effect. Now you can definitely build for guard if you want to use some iron wall jewels but in my opinion and experience this weapon is just so mobile and it sheets super quickly that you really don't need the guard feature. It's great to use in emergency situations if you're like in the wrong spot or you just need to block immediately go ahead use it but just be prepared you're going to be knocked back quite a bit. For any other situations that you can foresee though it's always better to just dodge and go straight for an attack with the advancing slash instead of being knocked back and then having to recover and then going for your damage. Now it doesn't mean guard is useless, we've already discussed how guarding into backstep is very helpful. Guard can also be used to use items without putting your weapon away and you can equip flash pods, dunk pods, place bombs, even dust of life which is actually really helpful. You can also use potions but do keep in mind that you can't sprint while using these potions through guard. So in my opinion using the guard items is great for quick items but if you're trying to heal and you need to be able to sprint make sure to put your weapon away. The last two things I want to mention are really things that are just convenience or helpful skills to help you adjust your accuracy. 
So the spiral slash is actually a light attack that lets you damage while also pivoting. Remember the first combo that we talked about with the two light and three heavy hits? You can actually use spiral slash anywhere within there to get your positioning right. And this will allow you to just pivot a little bit here just to make sure that you're attacking the right body part. So as you can see here as well, the skill kind of lets you infinitely attack in a way by alternating between light and heavy hits and then pivoting to restart the combo. It's a great way to constantly output damage, but again, not your strongest hit. So you do want to fit in your perfect Russian charge attacks, so don't get too caught up in infinitely attacking. Finally, the last skill I want to talk about is the Slinger Burst Shot, which you can actually do without putting your weapon away with Sword and Shield. It's quick and easy to set up. You'll need to set up your Slinger Aimer to burst, but you only need to do this once every time you pick up ammo. So if you look here, the arm actually cocks up a bit. That indicates that it's ready to shoot the burst Slinger Shot instead of just one Slinger. This is a great way to stun monsters to give yourself a little bit of breathing room or readjust. You can also jump into the sleeping slash right from here which is actually the start of your perfect rush. So if you do see an opening, go for it. However in my experience I've seen that the slinger stuns aren't enough time to get the whole rush off. So I try to fit in at least one or two hits and then cancel the rush. Of course that does depend on the monster and the situation you're in. If the monster goes into an exhaustion after that then perfect you can finish the rush. If not, just cancel it and move on. The first two deal quite a bit of damage and the slinger stun actually gives you a safe space to do it so why not? Alright, like most of my how-to videos, I'd like to end off with the jewels and a couple of endgame builds that we're talking about. Something for you guys to strive for. So Sword and Shield is a pretty straightforward melee class. You're looking for max crit whenever possible. Every hit is a melee damage on this class. So if you're not critting every single hit, you're just losing damage. When you're calculating your builds, be sure to include the extra 20% that you get from tenderizing. Other classes, it's not ideal to really include this in, but Sword and Shield, it is very easy to tenderize as we've talked about before. So include it in, that saves you some jewels as well because you're almost going to be able to tenderize every part whenever you're on a hunt. Once you have crit up, the build starts to differ from here and Sword and Shield really shines with element or status weapons. If you're using a blast weapon, it's really easy to max on the meta 2 break 3 Kaiser piece just because the Kaiser comes with blast attack. The rest of the skills can really be anything that gives you attack, including Challenger, Attack Up, even Coalescence. I actually use Phoenix Jewels here because the Sword and Shield is a very mobile class. So being afflicted by Ice, Water, Fire elements, it isn't too bad because you can dodge quickly and then heal quickly. If you're a new player to Monster Hunter, you should be aiming to get at least the Kaiser armor from Teostra. It's a really good armor specifically because of the Master Touch perk that comes with the armor set. Depending on your playstyle as well, KO jewels are also a great addition since the shields deal quite a bit of KO damage and if you combine that with the constant charge slashes and downward shield bashes, you're sure to get a couple knocks. Now if you're going for an element build, Safi is definitely one of the better ones to take advantage of critical element, kind of similar to most other element weapons. It's got great damage and of course you've got to watch your health because you do drain a bit from there. You can definitely play around with this build as much as you like. Mine here uses Resentment on the Charm. Attack damage is maxed out. Challenger is maxed out as well. Blaze is also because it's a fire build just for that extra element damage. Don't forget as well that when you have a full Safi set, you actually get a 40% extra boost when you take out your weapon. So again, take that into account when you're building this Safi element build. You don't need as much crit on the build because of that armor bonus. Now, while Safi is great, there's actually another element build that works really well with Sword and Shield, which is using Frostcraft. I have another video describing Frostcraft, so definitely go check that out if you want to see the playstyle of using Sword and Shield with Frostcraft. Essentially, what you're looking at here is I use Safi weapons for this so that I have Velcana Divinity. That gives me the ability to take off one of the Velcana armors. That enables you to put on two breaky builds so you can still get Agitator Secret, which is a great attack from Challenger while still maintaining Velcana's Divinity, so Frostcraft is at max damage. Having Agitator Secret plus the weapon crit plus the weakness exploit pushes this build over 100% crit, so again, you're maxing out on crit and maxing out your damage. It's definitely a really fun build. I've enjoyed using Frostcraft, and honestly, this is my go-to for elements now. I don't use the Safi ones as much. Using Frostcraft just changes up your playstyle, it changes the variety in the game, and it's overall just fun and great damage, so give it a shot if you want to. And that, my friends, is the Sword and Shield. I hope you guys really enjoyed that video. I know I've been a little bit slow at making videos. It's something that I definitely need to improve on, but 
I put a lot of detail into every single one, so I really appreciate all of you that support the channel, subscribe to the channel, liked any videos, or simply just watched them, you know? Thank you so much. Sword and Shield is a great weapon, so I hope you guys have a lot of fun with it. Definitely an underrated weapon, so give it a shot. It's actually a lot of fun. Have some fun slicing and dicing some monsters, and then eat up your big feasts after. Till next time, hunters. Sky Sensei is out.